All right, Alexander, let's talk about Ukraine. Well, let's talk about Hunter Biden and Ukraine and Joe Biden and Ukraine. Everything always goes back to Ukraine. It's like Ukraine is the nexus of all of this, uh, this corruption and, and, uh, and sinister activity that, uh, that has plagued us for the last, like, 10 years, it seems. More, 20 years. Everyone was up to something in Ukraine. And it's no secret about um, Hunter Biden and Burisma. We all know about that. We all know about the Hunter laptop. We've all seen the video of Joe Biden speaking, I think it was like to the Atlantic Council or the Council of Foreign Relations, where he talked about firing uh, Shokin, the prosecutor, or else uh, Poroshenko wasn't going to get the billion dollars. Now we have an email from the Hunter laptop which has a conversation between a Burisma executive on behalf of uh, Mikhaila Zlochevsky, who was the, uh, the president or managing director, founder of Burisma. And this uh, Burisma executive is basically telling Hunter Biden, look, uh, your father's going to be coming to Ukraine in a couple of months. Um, we would like some really good positive PR for uh, Mr. Zlochevsky, for Burisma, for the work that we're doing. And if you can handle this, this problem that we have with, you know, these, uh, these prosecutors, that would be great. And uh, there's another email where Hunter also thanks uh, Burisma for amazing gifts and stuff like that. It doesn't really get into much detail. So <laughs> what are your thoughts on well, this? I mean... Obviously, quid, quid pro quo obviously favors yeah. for, for gifts. I mean, you know, it's pretty clear. Well, absolutely. Once upon a time, if this sort of thing had been produced against, you know, any other U.S. official, let's say, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, they would be every, the, the media would be all over this and they would be saying these emails were the smoking gun. <laughs> they were, in effect, the evidence that proved the case. And uh, prosecutors would probably be saying the same thing. And there would be close questioning of um, not just um, Hunter, but of the father as well. At the moment, we see absolutely no sign of anything like this. But, I mean, to my mind, what more evidence do you need? Do you remember when we used to talk about, you know, the Russia Gate case? All sorts of revelations used to come out, and we'd unpack them, and people would say that they are really important and that they prove the case against Trump. And it'd be immediately obvious that none of them really held together. Well, this is the opposite. This is this looks like the real thing. This is an actual email from a Burisma executive to Hunter. It provides the backstory, <laughs> clearly indicating what's going on. It clearly involves Joe Biden. It sews the whole thing together, and it makes sense of the whole Burisma affair. As I said, we've discussed many, many times in many, many programmes we've done the underlying question, what was Hunter being paid $85,000 for. Now, let me repeat again. Nobody a is... Month. A, a month. A month, sorry. A month. A month. A month, yeah. absolutely. Let me repeat again a point we've made many times. I make many, many times in every programme. I mean, you know, there is... Everybody is entitled to the presumption of innocence. I'm not saying in and of itself that this proves anybody's guilt. But it points clearly towards a certain level of inquiry. And as I said, I would have expected the President of the United States, Joe Biden, and his son to be questioned closely about this email and for this email to be center, the centerpiece of an inquiry. And of course, in the United States, under the protection of the First Amendment, I come back to what I'm saying. Once upon a time, the media would have been saying this was, these were the smoking guns. Right. So Fox News uh, wrote quite an extensive uh, post on uh, this, these emails. On November 2nd, 2015, Burisma executive 
Vadim Pocharsky, emailed Hunter Biden, who was serving as Burisma board member, his associates Devin Archer, a fellow board member, and Rosemont Seneca Partners, President Eric Schwerin about a revised proposal, contract, and initial invoice for Burisma Holdings from lobbying firm Blue Star Strategies, according to emails from Hunter Biden's abandoned laptop, which have been verified by Fox News Digital. Pucharski emphasized in his email that the ultimate purpose of the agreement with Blue Star Strategies was to shut down any cases, pursuits against Nikolai in Ukraine, referring to Zlochevsky, who also went by Nikolai. Indeed. And, and it gets into the, the details of the email. And then a short time later, Shokhin, the Procurator General, is sacked. And the, presi- uh, the, the Vice President, Joe Biden, brags about the way in which he got it done. And we've had, we've had Shokhin's own comments about this. He's given affidavit evidence. I mean, what more evidence do you need? I mean, let me repeat again. I... I, 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 I have to say this because it's important legally that one does say this everybody is entitled to the presumption of innocence but the evidence and this is evidence all of this is evidence is stacking up there is clearly a case to answer the only issue now is is that case are people asking the questions which require that answer. So far, I haven't seen it. And by the way, all of the people that you've just mentioned, Devon Archer, Blue Star, Zlochevsky, we've discussed them many times. Uh, John Solomon used to talk about them. Do you remember him? The, uh, the journalist. There, there, there is, this isn't exactly new material, but it all ties it together in ways that people have speculated up to this point, that it's tied together. Well, here we have evidence that it was tied together exactly as those speculations, which were informed speculations, suggested. So there's clearly a case, a very serious case. Why aren't people asking? Why why isn't this being pursued further? And this is not being said by, you know, investigative journalists like Solomon, who I think is an outstanding journalist, by the way, but, you know, he's somewhat, if you like, on the periphery today in American journalism. This comes from Fox News. Verified. Verified by Fox News. News. Exactly. They've done done the studies in the laptop, and we understand that the laptop, that the uh, FBI had... Well, we don't... We had the man who got the laptop, he gave it to the FBI... They've had all this information. So uh, how much of this is connected to Biden's war in Ukraine? I I mean, I I always come back to this. You know, we we once did a show on the Duran a a while ago, um, I believe during the elections, 2020. And uh, we talked about what if Biden were to win, given everything that we knew about uh, Burisma and Hunter in Ukraine. Um, obviously, the, the question has been answered and our worst fears came true. But how much of this is connected to, to Biden's continued escalation in Ukraine? Some people may even describe it as Biden's uh, desire to, to destroy Ukraine. Yeah, right. Well, the very fact that a question like that can now be validly asked explains why given all that all of this information was known before the 2020 election. As I said, the FBI was already in possession of the laptop and all of that. The facts in this laptop, this whole information, this whole package of information, should have been revealed during the election to the American people. Because there is clear conflict of interest here. It looks as if the president himself... He's provided, by the way, no explanations for any of this. He simply hides behind the the mantra that his son has done no wrong, even though his son has now entered into a plea bargain. But the president still says that. He still tells us that he's proud of his son. 
but he's never provided any explanation for his own actions or for any of these emails or, 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 or really discussed them in any public forum. Anyway, he is now making decisions about Ukraine, the single most important issue of his presidency. And it turns out that his son, and these emails suggest himself, he has intimate connections and involvement in Ukraine. A clear sign of a conflict of interest. But a conflict of interest involving the President of the United States to my mind, as I said, it calls into question the legitimacy of his position, because if he has a conflict of interest, if you can't any longer assume that he is making his decisions impartially and in the interests of the United States because he has this conflict of interest, well, he shouldn't be president at all, because as president, he can't say, delegate all of this to someone else. He can't call up Kamala Harris and say, look, Kamala, I can't really make any decisions about Ukraine. There might be a war going on there, but I can't make those decisions because I've got this conflict of interest. You should be making those decisions for me. At the end of the day, it means that he shouldn't be president. I, I mean, that's my own clear view. Now, what role does this all have? We can only guess, but I cannot assume that it hasn't, doesn't have a role. I think it has a very important role. It may explain why the president is so obsessed by Ukraine to the exclusion of almost all other issues in terms of his foreign policy. He's interested in China and he's interested even more in Ukraine and he seems to be neglecting anything else. And that might also explain why he doesn't want Ukraine to be defeated on the battlefield and the present government there to collapse. Or it might explain why he wants the war to be prolonged because he wants the war to be, you know, Ukraine to be destroyed because he's got some animus against the country, which has brought him nothing but pro trouble and problems. Or it could be that, you know, in this collapse, all sorts of things that he might not want to come out might be hidden. That's all speculation. I don't know what is in his mind, but the very fact that we're asking these questions shows us the false position we've been put in, because none of this was disclosed properly to the American people when it should have been. You know, the other thing that I find to be incredible about, about Burisma, Hunter, Biden, the conflict in Ukraine is the Europeans collective West, the entirety of the collective West. There's not one leader in all of the, the collective West that, that questions any of this, that doesn't you know, say, you, okay, if, with the exception of Viktor Orban, but Viktor Orban doesn't bring up uh, Hunter and Burisma, but there's not one leader, no, not one leader that stands up and says, you know, guys, we're destroying our own country here in Europe or, or, or wherever. We're, we're destroying ourselves. And you know, let's look at the history of, of the president of the United States and, and this country that we're destroying our own economies, our own, our own well-being for. It, it's, no one says anything. No, nobody, <laughs> no, 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 nobody, says anything. nobody says anything. None of the leaders say it, even though, as you correctly say, they have a responsibility to their own people and, you could argue, to the security in Europe and the peace in Europe. And none of them, so far as we know, have asked the president himself questions about this. None of them has come forward and said, Joe, I think, you know, you take it, we, I need to take it to one side. There's all this, all these rumours and speculations going on. There's these emails that are now appearing. There's talk that the attorney in Delaware is investigating. Tell us what's going on. We need to know. We need an explanation from you as to exactly what is going on. Because that is our concern. We have our own countries to worry about. There's no evidence that any one of them have done this, have found the courage to do this. And even worse, the media in Europe are not covering this story. I mean, I, I've not seen a single article in the British media about this topic. Not one has appeared that's discussed uh, um, the appearance of these emails and the fact that Fox News has verified them 
and what they say. I mean, there just isn't any discussion about this in Europe at all. It's like a kind of omerta, a kind of silence has fallen. And it's very bad, and it's very sinister, and it's very wrong. Yeah, and they keep on giving money and weapons and yeah. escalating, and yeah. no one takes a step back no. and, and, and questions the, the motivations behind all of this from the man in the, in the White House. Absolutely. Why is he doing this? Why is he so obsessed with Ukraine? Why are we doing this to ourselves? I mean, these are the questions that all of these leaders in the collective West should, should, should at least, at, at a minimum, be asking. Yes. Yeah. They just go along with it. Well, apparently the story is, and it's appeared, I think it was in Axios, there was a piece in Axios about how bad-tempered and argumentative and bullying uh, Biden is. And apparently, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a guess now, I suspect they're all frightened of asking him these questions because they know that he will explode and start shouting or whatever it is that he does, you know, be rude and insulting, as apparently he often is. And um, I, these leaders, so-called leaders in Europe, are not strong enough to withstand that and to say to Joe, well, Joe, you've got to answer these questions because fundamentally they are too important to be left unanswered. Let me repeat again, if the president has an explanation for all of this, if Joe Biden has an explanation, then he should provide it. He owes it to the American people. He owes it to the people of Ukraine. He owes it to the people of Europe. He owes it to the whole world. But first and foremost, and above all else, he owes it to the American people who elected him. <laughs> Well, he's going to be running for re-election, so well, I imagine well, that his opponents are going to be discussing this. Well, absolutely. Or they should. Well, so they should, absolutely. I mean, bear in mind... All right. Uh, bear in mind that his predecessor was impeached because he asked questions about this matter, or at least had a discussion which touched on this matter with the current president of Ukraine. And that was considered so outrageous and inappropriate that, as I said, there was an impeachment about it. Well, if you can impeach that president for asking, for having a conversation about it, certainly that is a big issue. It is a very, very big issue. And the president himself, now that we've got so much more information than we did at the time of those previous impeachment proceedings, needs to provide us with an explanation. There should be, at the very least, a press conference. There should be, uh, there should be uh, maybe a uh, presidential broadcast to the American people. And in my opinion, and this is long overdue, and Jonathan Turley at Recipsa Ocloquita has been talking about this all the time. There should be special counsel appointed. There absolutely needs to be special counsel appointed. Yeah, well, Trump, you know, he was uh, poking around trying to figure out what was going on with, uh, with Hunter and Burisma and uh, Biden. And he asked uh, Zelensky, you know, what's going on? And uh, the deep states, the neocons, they got very upset with the fact that Trump was, was poking around because, uh, in Ukraine because they were planning a conflict with Russia via Ukraine. And they said, this guy Trump is going to spoil it. He's going to ruin it if he keeps on asking these questions. So let's send the message and impeach him because we've got a plan for Ukraine. And Ukraine is going to be the uh, battering ram, as Putin calls it, the battering ram to destroy Russia. And yeah. that's, that's why they went after Trump over just a, just a ridiculous little phone call with absolutely. Zelensky. They wanted to send absolutely. a message. Don't you dare poke around in Ukraine. But absolutely, and I agree with every part of that. I mean, I absolutely agree with that. But of course, again, it shows, the first impeachment shows the sensitivity of this issue. And why is it so sensitive? Well, I think we are due an explanation. Why is it so sensitive? I agree. I think we all had to know, but yeah. we are we are doing explanation. All right, uh, we'll leave it there. The Duran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, and Rockfin. And go to the Duran shop. Ten percent off. Use the code. Good day. Take care.